having trouble with your perspective? Well, I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way to set up your perspective grid in Photoshop. Check it out. All right, guys, welcome to episode two. My name is Jose Vega. My concept artist at adamjosevega.com. And in this channel, I share my tips and tricks for Photoshop and digital painting. Now, today's episode, we are all gonna be talking about perspective. Now, I'm gonna show you the quickest and easy way to set up your perspective in Photoshop. So let's check it out. Okay, so before I show you guys the, the way that I set up my perspective grid in Photoshop, I wanna talk to you guys about two main things here. So we can understand perspective a little bit better. And the first one is gonna be our horizon line. Now, our horizon line is a line that divides the sky from the ground. It's always at eye level. And the horizon line will always be present and will always affect your perspective, whether it's visible or not, and whether it's inside the canvas or not. So for example, I could have my canvas here. And let's do a little sketch here real quick. So let's say I have a canvas here of my image. And sometimes we could have the horizon line way off outside the canvas, either on the top or the bottom here, right? So it's not, it's not you're not going to be able to see it inside the canvas, but it's still going to affect how we're going to see the perspective here in our image, right? Or even sometimes we have our canvas, it's a crooked line there, it's okay. And maybe our horizon lines right here, but then we have things like and it could be like buildings or or characters in here that are gonna block our visibility of that line in there. So these two cases are you know are pretty common. Let's say you know like buildings and and this could be like nature, mountains, characters, buildings, man-made things. So here where you don't actually see the horizon line inside your canvas, but it's actually uh, present there, so that's gonna affect also how we're gonna, our point of view and, and our perspective in our scene, okay? Now, the other point is gonna be vanishing points. Now, vanishing points is a point where all the parallel lines meet in the distance, and, and this is very important because sometimes you have heard one vanishing point, one point perspective, or two-point perspective, it means that there's two vanishing points and so on. And so when we're using one of these points, it, it means that all these parallel lines that are parallel are gonna meet at that one point, okay? So if, I, if we have, for example, three, three groups of parallel lines in our scene, then we're gonna need three vanishing points, okay? So let's take a look at a, an example here so we can apply this uh, very quickly and very basic and see how this applies to uh, an actual uh, scene. Okay, so the first case I'm gonna show you here is gonna be a one point perspective example here. It's just a picture of a warehouse that I took. And here we have a lot of these structures here in the ceiling here are parallel because they're being, they're, they were constructed that way. And they're parallel to these walls here and to the side of the columns here on the top here. So all those lines and those structures are gonna meet at one point here. And I made the lines pretty thick so you guys can see it, but so it could be a little bit confusing, but they're all gonna meet here at this one point in the middle. Now this blue line is gonna be my horizon line. And here you're gonna see how all those lines from the ceiling structure and a little bit on the walls here and the, and the columns are gonna go on that direction into that point because they're all parallel, right? So we also have lines that are going horizontally. So here we have these beams going across, but since the way I took this picture, it's making all these lines parallel to the horizon line. They're not gonna really meet at any point because they're parallel going into the distance left and right. And we also have the vertical lines here of these columns, which are parallel parallel or they're perpendicular to our horizon line. So they're not gonna really meet at any point because they're, they're just completely uh, parallel to each other. So this is a case of a one point perspective because um, the only point that we're using is for this um, 
structures here in the ceiling and some of the walls here in orange. So this is like an example of a one point perspective or one vanishing point. Now, if we take this same area and we change the angle of the camera or our point of view, same place, but we're looking at it in a different, in a different way. Now we have the same structures that are going on the ceiling towards this point over here. You're not gonna be able to see that point because it's outside our canvas, right? The blue line is still our, our horizon line. But now the structures that were parallel to each other here on this, on this example here, the ones going horizontal, now they're going into this one point way outside our canvas here because we changed the, perspe the perspective of our point of view. So now we're using two points. We're using one point to this orange structure parallel lines, and then we're using another point over here, way back here to the right outside our canvas for these other structures here, right? And still we have our verticals that are parallel to each other. So we're still keeping a two point perspective. So this is just another point another another example of, of a two point perspective but it's important you know how we see the scenes because it's the same scene the same environment but we're just looking at it in a different in a different way all right so now i'm going to show you how we can actually set up our perspective grid so the first thing that i want to do is decide where my horizon line is going to be and let's just say i want to have my horizon line pretty low about a third right here and um, if I want to have I could place my let's I'm going to do a two-point perspective so I want to place my points in my horizon line but I want to place them outside my canvas because the closer they are to each other like let's say I put a point here and a point here the more distorted my image is going to look so I want to place points like outside so I have some space to to play around with. And the trick about this is that if I want to place a point over here, it's going to be really hard for me to kind of place it exactly where the horizon line is and kind of throw my lines, right? So it's going to be really tricky and time consuming. So what I like to do is turn on my rulers in, 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 in Photoshop. You cannot see them right now, so let me turn those on here. And if you don't have them, you can just press Control R or go to Window, sorry, View Rulers. And now you can just click and drag from your rulers. If you click and drag from the top ruler, you create a horizontal guideline. And if you grab from the left ruler, you're gonna create a vertical guideline, right? But we just need the horizontal one. So I place it where my horizon line is. And now I have a guideline that is gonna help me place my points more accurately. But even though I still see it, it's gonna be really hard for me to throw all my lines perfectly at that specific point, right? So what I'm gonna be doing is this, and this is the the part that, that it gets really, really easy. If I go to Polygon Tool, now I wanna make sure that it's in Pixels options here. You have Path, and you also have Shake Layers. So you want to make sure that it's in fill pixels, polygon tool, and size you're going to put 100. And now on this drop down menu here that you see here, and this is a CS3 Photoshop version, so it might be a little bit different if you have a more updated version. But just find the drop down menu and make sure that star is checked and in the size by 99. I'm going to explain what all these things are, but I just want you to have the setup uh, perfectly. Now, once I have that, if I want to have my vanishing point on this part, I just got to click and drag. Now I'm going to make sure that I do it in a different layer. Click and drag. And then now I have all my lines there set up already. And if I want to make a point inside of my canvas, I'll do the same thing. Click and drag. And now it's just super easy to just have all my guidelines there and just have it set up. So let's do it again. So I'm going to go back. I'm gonna to go to Polygon tool. Make sure it's on pixels here. Go to sides, put the maximum, which is 100. And sides pretty much is how many lines are gonna 
come out of that point, right? The maximum is 100, so um, I like to have as many as I as I as I can. Now, the drop down the star is going to be the shape of 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 the shape that I'm doing here. If I don't, it's going to create a circle. So I want to make sure that I have a star, and in this side, it's going to be my radius on that point that I put. So let's just say I have 10. The radius on that point is going to be too thick, and it's not going to be really helpful. So I want to have the maximum here, so it's the smaller, the smallest size. And now I click and drag, and I have my point there, right? So I'm just going to click and drag here, click and drag, click and drag once again to have a two-point perspective here. And now since I made in another layer and on pixels, I can just you know, uh, change the the lightness of this. I could put it white. I could uh, put some color to that if I want. So since in pixels, you know, you can edit it however you want to and and do whatever you want. This is I'm in a new layer. I can bring down the opacity just so it doesn't. It's not so so strong on my canvas. And let's make my canvas a little bit darker right so now I have my guys here and I can do my drawing right so I'm just gonna show you um, just a quick here just to do a couple boxes here to explain something so let's say I want a box up here I'm gonna use my guidelines here very very quick here and since I don't have a point of reference or a vanishing point for my verticals I'm just gonna go straight down parallel to each other I'm going to use that other point here, and I'm going to go here. I'm going to go vertical again, so I'm just going to go straight down. I'm using my shift key to go straight down here. Now, you see here on this spot, I don't really have a, a guideline there. So that's okay, because I know a little bit that that point is about halfway in between this line and this line. So that's a good guideline for me to to follow when I'm drawing that line. So if I see myself that I'm doing, for example, this, I know that I'm going in the wrong direction because that point is not gonna be at the center point here in between those two lines. So another way that you can do it is kind of measure here and put a point and then you drive yourself into that point there. And then do the same thing on this side. So that's a boxing to point perspective there. If I were to do it on, on the bottom here, let's just make it here real quick. Let's do a more rectangle one. Go straight down from our verticals. I'm gonna put a point about the same distance here, kind of there, kind of like that. Same thing here. Up there. Point to point. I can actually go a little bit higher here. Now, if I were to, um, like, if I wasn't practicing really my hand coordination and, and all that, I will actually just use my line tool and I would just go. Boom, go straight down here, 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 go straight up. It's probably going to be a little bit more accurate, so I'm just using my, my line tool here. Like that, right? But, you know, sometimes it's good practice to just do it by hand. You know, it's not going to be super perfect, but it's good practice. Um, but what I want to try to say here is that you can see here these three boxes. Let's just eliminate this one. Now, here you're going to notice that everything that is above my horizon line, you're going to see the bottom planes of it. Right? We see the front, of course, and one of the sides, depending on, on where it's situated. So if, if this box was like over here, we will see this other side here. 
because we'll be facing oops we'll be facing more this direction here so we'll have something like like so right so but everything that's underneath the horizon line we're gonna see the top planes here right we see the front and one of the sides so this is very important it could be it could sound very very simple but this is very important because for example if I have a character right let's just say I have a character here and this kind of is just standing straight right it's just sitting there or standing there now you're gonna notice that let me get a little bit smaller like so you're gonna notice that that all everything that's above that horizon line right Everything that's above, we're gonna see the bottom plane. So if it's just standing there, you can we can see the bottom of the chin. Right, you're gonna see the bottom of the nose. You're gonna see everything like his body, like a cylinder, going up this way, right? And the closer to the horizon line, the flatter it's gonna get, right? So the same thing goes on the opposite direction. So the further away it is going down, it's gonna look. We're gonna look at all the top planes. So we're gonna see the top of the foot here, right? And one of the mistakes that uh, uh, some people do is that they draw the characters and then they draw the characters in this perspective, but they draw their feet like this, right? Like if you were looking at it, if you were standing on the horizon line like that, right? So you have to take that into consideration so it actually looks like you're actually seeing it in a perspective and you know it depends where the horizon line is in comparison to the character that's going to change but this is just a, a thing to th think about when you're thinking about the perspective of that character in your scene all right um, so uh, this is super simple um, um, this is just a two-point perspective if I were to make a three points per per perspective let's say I have these two points Let's just make another one up here, all the way up. Now I could have a third point, for example, here for another object in our scene, but I'm going to make it all the way up here. I'm going to do the same thing, just click and drag here. And now when I do my verticals, now I'm going to have a guide here for my verticals. So if I were to do the same box here, right, I'm going to Taking consideration now those verticals instead of going straight parallel up, it's gonna have a little bit more of a curve or distortion into those um, vertical lines. So you're gonna notice that the further away I am from that point into the edge of the canvas, the more tilted those vertical lines are gonna get here like that. So that's going to create a different look. If I just add that third point on the top, you're going to see that if I have like a big building here, um, it's going to look way bigger than if I just have like a regular two point perspective. Right? So I'm going to show you just a couple sketches here um, using uh, different perspective and, and, and see how that looks.
Okay, guys, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you very much for coming. I really hope that this little trick will help you understand perspective and set up your perspective grid even more efficient on your scenes. Now, if you have any other tips and tricks that you would like to share with the community, or if you have any comments about the video, or any questions that you would like to know about how to do certain things in Photoshop, let me know in the comments so I can actually address it in the comments or make future videos about it. I really appreciate you guys coming here. And if you like the content, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and share it with your friends. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the next one.